good morning students how are you all all are okay good are you learning your daily lessons read them and try to understand them and learn them okay don't uh, keep on uh, postponing the learnings daily lessons you, have, you must learn okay good so this sebi securities exchange board of india you might have read its objectives and functions isn't it so it is the board that regulates the functions of all stock exchanges and providing some guidelines for the stock exchanges and intermediaries we have learned isn't it so today we will learn the powers of sebi okay powers of sebi what are the powers of sebi there are six powers given so all that we have learned in the uh, functions and the objectives only will be coming here also okay so interrelated power to do this one that may be its function okay that may be their objective so it is interrelated so the first power power to powers relating to stock exchanges and intermediaries powers rela relating to stock exchanges and intermediaries intermediaries we know all the organizations that uh, may be the brokers the members then other may be the merchant bankers then underwriters okay all these are called the intermediary so relating powers relating to stock exchanges and intermediary spot power it has okay then all these people those who are dealing with the securities okay it has the powers towards them and it can ask information it can ask information from the stock exchanges and this intermediaries it can ask information or details or it can ask inquiry okay do inquiry that is called asking information from the stock exchanges and intermediaries regarding the business transactions regarding any business transactions what they do any business transaction not any private okay any business transactions for inspection because we have learned it's one of the function isn't it so at the time of inspection it has the right it has the power to ask information to the stock exchanges and the intermediaries regarding any business transactions okay that's all very simple first it has the power to ask information from this stock exchanges and intermediaries regarding any business transactions for inspection or for any other purpose also okay or any other purpose any complaint if they have received for anything it has the right to ask information they have to provide if they ask any information submit the financial statements they they must do okay so any information what has done any quarrel any uh, Um, any cheating or any malpractice done in the buying and selling trading of securities okay or in the floor any brokers have cheated any investors anything if they ask information they must provide them then power to impose monetary penalties power to impose monetary penalties fine isn't it that is called fine only penalties so if it finds any fault isn't it it has the right to impose penalties in monetary value okay so it is em empowered to impose monetary penalties on the capital markets that means the capital markets in good stock exchanges they have given another word only okay capital markets and intermediaries and other participants for any violations for any violations 
violating the law. Okay, that is called violations. Then even they can do suspension of their registration. They have the right to impose suspension. They we be say no, he is suspended. That is suspension their registration. Whose registration? Maybe the stock exchanges or any intermediaries. Intermediaries in the sense I have told you. All the brokers or any any self-regulatory organizations yesterday we studied. Then any merchant bankers. Okay, their registration may be suspended. Somewhat like cancelled, isn't it? For a short period. That you know, isn't it? Suspension for not, uh, for the long period. For a short period. For a short period. Okay. It has the, SEBI has, is empowered to impose monetary penalties. Okay, SEBI has the power to impose monetary penalties on capital markets or stock exchanges and intermediaries for any violation, violation of the law. Okay, then it can even impose suspension of their registration for a short period understood now the third power power to initiate actions in functions assigned power to initiate actions it can take action start the action in functions assigned So, the same thing you have to write. Okay, that points you should keep in mind. So, now SEBI has the power to initiate actions in the, initiate actions against the stock exchanges in functions assigned. You can write. Okay. An example we can say, it can issue guidelines to different intermediaries. Okay. That we have studied, isn't it? It has the right to give guidelines to different intermediaries. They are providing the guidelines, isn't it? Or it can introduce specific rules. It can introduce some new rules. Introduce special rules. Any specific rules for what? For the protection of investors. For the protection of investors. Understood now? So, SEBI has the power to initiate any actions in the functions assigned. Already the function is what? It, it can uh, provide the guidelines to different intermediaries. Isn't it? So, the same thing it can do. It, that is one of the function, isn't it? So, it can uh, start the action. It can start the action of that uh, providing functions. That is assigned for the SEBI. Okay, all these are the functions. We have studied, isn't it? The guidelines. To provide guidelines for different intermediaries and the stock exchanges. That it can start doing. That can provide them. Okay. What it is only in the... Uh, that um, functions it is mentioned but it can start that action and also it can introduce some specific some separate rules in order to protect the investors investors means all the people those who buy and sell the shares in the stock exchanges so the next one is power to regulate insider trading power to regulate insider trading this also we have studied in both objectives and in the functions isn't it that it has the power power to regulate insider trading so is that you are sentence you have to write sebi has the power to regulate insider trading or 
it can regulate the functions of it can regulate the functions of merchant bankers who the merchant bankers also who merchant bankers those who uh, receive the get the shares in their hands and they will sell that one to the public okay they are called the merchant bankers so they may not you know because the merchant bankers know how the uh, the particular company is earning profit so they they know very well within a short period of time they may they are going to earn a, they are going to earn a heavy profit okay a lot of profit they are going to earn knowing this matter they may not purchase the uh, most of the shares on their own for this purpose only they are regulating the insider trading they are barring not regulate barring they may not do insider trading okay only all the trading must be done by the public okay so sebi has the power to regulate insider trading or it can regulate the functions of merchant bankers okay the next point powers under securities contracts act powers under securities contract act that you have studied isn't it securities contracts act 1956 now that this act is also providing some powers for the sebi what all the uh, that powers they are getting okay who is providing that one now they they have to regulate all the stock exchanges isn't it so for this sake now ministry of finance finance ministry finance minister isn't it so ministry of finance central government's ministry it has issued one notification on issued one notification on 13th september 1994 so it has delegated many powers to sebi okay to sebi and uh, as per this act securities contract securities contract act 1956 okay securities contract that the regulation act also it is called okay then what is the right it is giving How, what it is empowered okay that sebi is also empowered by the ministry to nominate that is the power it has got okay to nominate three members three members in the governing body of every stock exchange governing body of every stock exchange that means the management so it can nominate three members understood so sebi has got that power to nominate three members in the governing body of the stock exchange so other members may be five members i think so three members can be nominated by the by the sebi okay but that that power only this power only it has got from the ministry of finance on a notification in the gazette 13th september 1994 this is the power given to sebi what is that power to nominate three members in the governing body of the stock exchange then the last power is power to regulate business of stock exchanges that is the main thing isn't it power to regulate the business of stock exchanges okay sebi has the power you have to write every, every each and everything will start like that okay sebi has the power otherwise sebi is empowered or sebi has the power to okay otherwise sebi is empowered to regulate the 
business of stock exchanges okay then intermediaries that is what we are learning from the beginning isn't it intermediaries then these two people they are associated with the securities market okay they are associated with the securities market what is the securities market stock exchanges okay for the stock exchanges then this intermediary is not any other intermediaries those who buy and sell the textiles you know things they are intermediaries associated with the securities market then and mutual funds mutual funds then it can regulate the fraudulent and unfair practices okay fraudulent and unfair practices any fraud or it is not just okay unjust that is unfair unfair, unfair practices relating to securities okay relating to securities and regulation of regulation of acquisition of shares what is acquisition purchase purchase of shares so, actually it should come acquisition of that companies okay acquisition of companies and take overs merger and amalgamation okay that is called take over we studied yesterday that one acquisition and that merger and amalgamation they one company may purchase another company okay that is take overs of companies understood so that is the last point sebi is empowered to regulate the business of stock exchanges then intermediaries associated with the securities market and mutual funds then any fraudulent and unfair practices relating to securities and regulation of okay acquisition of shares and takeovers of companies all these must be regulated okay if any company is going to be purchased by another company that is called acquisition of share okay then take over one company uh, will be amalgamated join together okay all these are should they, this must be regulated by sebi okay that is the last power now we will see the next heading dematerialization have you heard this word we have never heard isn't it dematerialization it is regarding the shares here one new thing introduced in the in india or in the world okay demat account we say we have account in the bank isn't it uh, that uh, what uh, fixed deposit account or Uh, savings deposit account or current deposit account we have what is this dematerialization what is demat account it is related to that means related to share that is very clear isn't it share when we purchase share what we get we get a share certificate isn't it a paperwork isn't it now this paperwork is destroyed okay that paper will be destroyed and instead of that one one electronic card will be given okay that electronic card will be given that is called that demat account okay okay it is a, we can say it is a process that is what given in the book uh, i think you all are having your book with you okay dematerialization that is the one of the three mark question first paragraph dematerialization is the process by which physical share certificate that means the share certificate are taken back by the company who will take this one by the company or by the registrar 
okay taken back by the company or registrar and it will be destroyed okay then another electronic form will be given another one form will be given so that in that electronic card they will credit their shares number of shares okay here all these uh, will be done with one department that is called depository participant this is what we have learned already in the stock exchange i told you depository participant isn't it that is what this depository participant like a bank okay one no they are working one department uh, is not a department like a bank it is working even the bank one department only is called a depository participant even if you go in um, state bank of india there it is given okay how to apply for this demat account and what you have to provide what are the documents we need to uh, submit along with the application form that will be given in the next class okay now we will learn the uh, oh, benefits of this dematerialization okay here we will learn along with this dematerialization we will learn its benefits and all then next class we will learn how to apply for the demat account then so what we have to do we have to give one request okay in the bank we have to give a request that i need to open a demat account then the investor then who is the person you are investor isn't it we have investor means we have bought many shares not we are going not going to deposit money but we are going to purchase and sell share for that one only we are purchase, we are applying for this demat account then we have to apply for this one then in with the depository participant that is in short form called dp okay then we need to provide the um, proof id proof or some documents must be submitted along with the application form okay then what they will do any purchases if you purchase shares they will credit our account okay credit our account if you sell shares they will debit our account understood because in the same way our account if you deposit money our bank account what they do bank account what they will do if you deposit they will credit our account isn't it if you withdraw money withdraw money then they will debit our account that means the money is decreasing in the same way if you purchase share it will credit your account it will the account will the credit balance will increase then if you sell share the debit they will debit so the credit balance will get reduced okay have you understood this one as we do in the bank account with the money money deposit they will credit if you withdraw money they will debit our account okay here no need to they will not give any number separate number understand that uh, like uh, i think that number will be there that but number of uh, that share certificate share certificate number may not be given okay not given but demat account number will be there okay account number is there but no no uh, number of the distinctive number of the share is not mentioned okay or we we can purchase any number of share any number of share can be purchased i think there uh, there was some restriction in the number of shares to be purchased in the uh, 
that paper form okay certificate form but here there is no restriction any number of shares can be purchased and sold then here in india when this trading has started this demat account purchasing and selling when it was that started commenced first okay which exchange has started that national stock exchange has started the first demat account okay in december 1996 here which company has bought the shares under demat account reliance company okay reliance industries it was the first company that has got its shares in demat form around 100 shares for the first time it has changed its shares into demat form okay then that bombay stock exchange it has commenced in the year 1997 next year only okay after one year in december 1997 It, the dematerialization of shares has been commenced in the year 1997 december okay okay they may ask for one word okay national stock exchange has started its dematerialization account in december 1996 the for that one who has bought the shares reliance industries okay so it this company has sold that means uh, his this company only has sold its 100 shares to some people okay now we will learn the benefits benefits of stock exchange what is the first benefit okay we got mainly that paper work is cancelled isn't it so all the risk regarding the paper work or physical certificate what can be done we may lose it that is the first one loss then someone may steal isn't it that is called theft or someone can correct isn't it 1000 into 10000 and 10000 as 1 lakh they can add one zero here and there they may do forgery okay or it may be spoiled okay that is called damage all these can be reduced all these are the risk okay risk pertaining to physical certificates like what loss theft forgery and damage they are eliminated completely do not worry about any of these things eliminated completely okay with what with a demat account okay okay when i read when i write you just listen and you will understand okay the first one all the risk okay all the risk related to loss theft forgery and damage are eliminated completely with the demat account then the next benefit here we do not have more paper work isn't it to write in a paper and stamp them one paper person will be writing another one will be stamping it will take sometimes they may not have the stamp paper okay all the companies the where the share certificate paper may not be available so all these paper work okay so here no need of any paper work isn't it so that lack of paper work enables quicker transactions okay lack of paper work enables quicker quicker transactions with within a second they can do account only isn't it everything is done through computer so quicker transactions and high efficiency is also there 
understand and higher efficiency in trading okay because there is no paper work everything is through computer with the depository participant like a bank okay so they have that they arrange for uh, quicker transactions within uh, uh, within 2 3 minutes they will open that account and they will give it in their hands okay then the third one so here trading has become more convenient okay why because there no need to uh, visit any broker okay more convenient because that ordinary purchase and sell what we have to do we have to visit a broker isn't it and that is no need so it is very convenient how trading has become very convenient because no need to visit a broker no need to visit a broker brokers jobbers you have studied isn't it so these people we do not need to visit through you know, online everything is done online isn't it so it is no need to visit so it is a very convenient for him to buy the share okay then that merger and amalgamation we studied isn't it merger and amalgamation at the time a particular shareholder do not worry about anything automatically the shares will be credited because it is online okay automatically it is credited okay he doesn't need to communicate with anyone okay each and every company what are you doing oh, nothing to worry about so all these are done through the that depository participant automatically it is credited okay then the fifth benefit because all these transactions are done through depository participant isn't it like a bank branch okay depository participant each trader no if you want that trader or an investor he doesn't need to communicate individually he do not need to communicate individually with each company each and every company okay what is their what is their value and we do not need to see okay the trader he doesn't need to uh, communicate each and every person but with the help of the depository participant he can uh, do trading of this securities as if he doesn't need to visit any broker here to no need to visit each and every company also to uh, see their price okay so it is very easy for them to trade then another one there is no need to pay stamp duty for the transfer of certificate otherwise transfer of certificate needs to be stamped stamp paper or stamp duty should be paid okay transfer of certificate needs the stamp duty that is not needed here understand no need for stamp duty for transfer of securities so what does it do it brings down the cost of transaction the cost of transaction is becoming less okay then the seventh point is now some banks they allow the holders demat holders that is dematerialization account okay these holders what they are providing they are providing both in one account what equity and debt instrument otherwise equity and debt instrument are separate this one share this one debenture we know isn't it we cannot have each one is separate one okay debenture certificate and share certificate are separate but here some banks are allowing the holders to have 
both equity and debt securities in one account okay then the next one for this purpose these banks they allow some dedicated staff dedicated and uh, that uh, well known okay then customer care officers customer care officers how to help them how to open the demand account what are the benefits okay then what are the things they have to provide uh, at the time of applying for this uh, demand account okay in all these procedures they will help them okay the bank has provided dedicated and trained customer care officers they will assist the the applicants okay assist them then ninth one he can buy and sell any number of shares okay buy and sell any number of share there is no restriction on the purchase there is no limit okay but for the physical securities for the paper securities they have some restriction but for this one they do not have any restriction any number of shares can be bought and sold okay the last one this if anyone because it is related to bank isn't it so uh, as we we have uh, if we deposit in fixed deposit in a bank we can get a loan isn't it from the as per the amount of uh, fixed deposit we can ask for the loan in the same way here this demand account also can be kept as the collateral security okay it is kept as a collateral security we can ask for loan from the bank okay have you understood now all these 10 points these are the um, the benefits with this we will start i will just mark and give you the question answers what is demand account in page number 70 that we have not to take an okay demand account what is meant by dematerialization what is meant by dematerialization here it is in page number 69 okay that this one first paragraph then this third paragraph of first sentence then this sentence this one that much will do okay three more question then what is the power of sebi under securities contract act page number 68 68 here this one from here take here fully okay function then powers second question okay long long answer second question explain the powers of sebi powers of sebi from here till here okay all these six points powers then the next question what are the benefits of dematerialization in page number 69 benefits okay from here till here okay all the 10 points okay one on point you can write and take okay here these two points here this this one up to here 
okay all these points are easy only if you read you will understand with my explanation you will understand easily okay now after completing the lesson we will mark all the one word okay students so with this we will wind up today's class okay students thank you study well